Hello, I'm Sole and you are watching Best of Baltic Entertainment. Sally, welcome to Latvia. I must say for me personally, this is a really exciting experience uh, to have you here and see you live because I've been listening to you as a teenager, which is funny, 10 years later we are here. And uh, tonight, uh, this show is uh, your last one on this tour, right? Yeah. And does it feel like uh, some chapter has ended and something new is about to come? And how was the tour actually like so far? Mm. The tour was, uh, it was fun, but it was also very, uh, it was a little bit exhausting because of COVID. We, mm. we, uh, we, had, we were touring for three weeks in Europe and uh, I mean, COVID is not over. <laughs> so we really felt that on the tour, like it was always kind of a risk that uh, something would come up or we would need to end the tour or there was a lockdown or something. So. I, I, when I came home, I was like, I don't want to tour, you know, I don't want to do those big tours, uh, like, until, like, I just want to wait until COVID is over. But it's it's okay to do, like, one 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 of shows like this. Now we just flew in to here, and uh, then I'm just going to cross my fingers to get back to Iceland without COVID before Christmas, uh, because everyone is checked before you come into the country, yeah. so you cannot enter the country with uh, without doing a test. Um, so hopefully I'll be home <laughs> and have peaceful <laughs> with <Christmas>. my family. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the the release is. Uh, I mean, we we were waiting for the releasing this album, Mother Melancholia, for almost two years, you know, uh, and we were always postponing the uh, tours and stuff. So I don't I don't feel like I've finished it uh, in a way, but it's just really different and it's weird times, but. But yeah, for this tour, it's over, and then I will see about next year what happens, you know, because all things are so uncertain yeah. still, you know. Yeah, it is so. <laughs> and let's jump back in time a bit. You come from a family who is close to music, and you grew up with music and studied music professionally. Did you feel like uh, the, being a musician came to you naturally, and you were drawn to it, or maybe you had some other ideas what to do in life? <laughs> No, I, I think I've always, uh, I never thought about becoming a musician. It was just always a part of me somehow. I was in a, all my friends were in the music school, so we were always a big group, kind of like just, we were just drawn, like we just did everything, like uh, music was our life and it still, still is. So, um, uh, I, yeah, it was never planned. I was never going to sing, you know. I. I'm not a singer. I don't consider myself to be a singer. So, uh, uh, but things happen. Life just happens, and you now I'm here. You know. Yeah. And your sound is quite unique. How did you discover that? Uh, did you discover it during the studying process? Uh, how was it for you? I think. Uh, yeah, maybe through studying process, but also just through uh, my kind of uh, experiments with. Uh, with some uh, recording, uh, like some DAWs and, you know, just me um, buying a computer and doing everything by myself and making mistakes and, you know, kind of learning by doing, you know, because I never, uh, I never learned. I, I studied like classical piano and I studied music, but I never studied the technical sides of recording and stuff. So I think that has al always, um, that has all come to me kind of, uh, by learning, by making mistakes. And that's how I kind of found my kind of lo-fi, dark sound, I guess, just also just by the music that I listen to is, is maybe more in that kind of field, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. And probably during the studies also, there's like this kind of classical approach and you have to maybe like free yourself mm, out of yeah, it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. All, yeah. I think that's never going to leave me, you know, that uh, classical, like uh, when I play the piano, I. And when I write music on the piano, I tend to go into certain like um, kind of uh, mode that I'm supposed to do. So sometimes when I want to kind of get out of that mode, I take another instrument and I 
I write the music on another instrument because I have like the approach is different somehow. So I mean, you just have to find your ways to get out of the box because classical music kind of put me in a box. But it, I'm also really happy that I studied music and I that I know how to play and that I know all these theories and stuff like that. So it's a uh, yeah, I, I think it's a really big part of who I am and how, how what kind of music I make is like that that I uh, that I studied it, you know. Yeah, and if you look back, uh, you becoming uh, an artist and discovering yourself and your style. Uh, do you have something that you would have liked to hear or get guided? There's nothing that I kind of. I look back and I like. I wish I could have done that or that. It was. Uh, I'm the most. I'm most happy with that. I that I was kind of fearless of just learning the the programs myself and not having like not being like. Oh, I'm a woman. I don't. I can't do that or something. It's just like just doing it. You know, just by curiosity. So yeah. I think that's probably the the number one teacher is uh, curiosity. <laughs> curiosity, yeah. being fearless and just doing. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And talking about your latest album. Um, could you tell more about the idea and concept of it? Mm -hmm. I could talk about that for hours. <laughs> uh, the, the album started as uh, an album that I wanted to make kind of uh, an album for the end of the world. So I wanted to like, I wanted to put down like uh, uh, kind of how I would hear the end of the world, like how would the last day for humans be or something. So that was like my idea that I was like cooking for a while, like, okay, making, making some drones and like like singing really high pits over it you know but then um, in the process I I started thinking about the the earth and the the mother nature and the and feminism and like how that kind of comes into the the end or something and how we treat the earth uh, and how we see it as a, a a feminine figure you know and how we kind of talk about the earth uh, like we talk about women and stuff mm. so I was like wow okay this is this is a lot <laughs> you know it was a lot of like uh, the concept is big so so it ended up like uh, if you see the cover of the album it's like mm. the this is what my husband made uh, it's a photo of me but you know he draw like fucked up my face and then put a crown on it so it's like it's supposed to be mother earth uh, kind of really tired but with dignity you know and the white fabric is like the landscape of the earth so that's how i see her if i if i if i talk about her in a in a feminine way that uh, she's uh, really tired she's angry you know and there are some songs on the album that are kind of like you know kind of powerful sound pieces like mm -hmm. parasite um, yeah, it was. It's about that, and also me being a mother and how it all connects, you know. So, and I heard you've uh, experimented with some um, interesting instruments like theremin mm -hmm. and something more like. The the reason why I wanted to have uh, like theremin and and I also bought myself a cello, is that I wanted the album uh, not to have like any um, kind of full like because on the piano. Uh, the pitch is usually really perfect, you know, you can't really slide between all those micro tones, you know. So I was playing with the theremin and with the cello, uh, also because I, I'm not a theremin player, or I'm not a cello player, but of course I, I know music, so I kind of can use my ear to do it. Uh, but there I could kind of explore all the, all the sounds like between the sounds, you know, the, the, all those micro sounds. So. Uh, and also, again, uh, when composing on another instrument that you don't know or that you are kind of, kind of bad doing, but you know it because you know music, that gives you new ideas. You know, something that I wouldn't come up with if I were like composing on the piano. And I saw the beautiful, really amazing video for mm -hmm. uh, Sonorous Skulls, mm -hmm. and it like tells a story and feelings of women mm -hmm. and the experiences they go through. And at the end of the video, there is this question to the viewer, when mm -hmm. do you feel safe? Yeah. So I wanted to ask you, when have been the times where you haven't felt safe and how you find maybe the safety? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I think that is, uh, uh, this is this the, the, the text in from the video is from the director Samantha 
uh, but of course this is a good question where do you feel safe and um, if I have ever not felt safe I had um, I had some time after I gave birth to my daughter that I was kind of going through mentally like a, kind of a crazy time you know because I, I, it was just uh, something kind of flipped in my head and that's that's also something that I'm writing about on the album like is uh, the word hysteria and mm -hmm. that's uh, on in Icelandic we tra it translates to uh, being a mother sick like the mothers who are you know get kind of crazy yeah. you know and uh, I was I was uh, I was taking that word and somehow trying to make it into a, into music because uh, and on the on the concert now that I'm gonna uh, that I'm about to play um, over Parasite the song I'm gonna sing a poem that I wrote after my daughter was born and this is kind of about that so so th there was a place where I didn't feel safe but I mean of course with a uh, with with uh, therapy and treatment and like just getting myself back together uh, I, I I now feel safe and, and being with my daughter is probably my safest you know just mm -hmm. taking you know just uh, taking care of her uh, which connects to the album. It's like um, you know, it's it's all. Um, and music is your safe oh, place yeah, too, yeah, yeah. right? Oh yeah, Music is my my music is my like it's my safe place, but it's also my fear. You know, it's uh, it's both. And have you already thought about the future, or maybe next album, where you may be already have some ideas? Mm, so I feel like I haven't really uh, completed or finished the Mother Melancholia. Uh, concept so I, I would probably work more with that but I'm also I feel like I'm moving more into uh, like the composers field and I, I want to write more music for other instruments and stuff so I think that's kind of my next thing when I sit down and think about what I want to what, what I want to do is, is uh, go deeper into that kind of field and besides music, what are the things that makes you happy, inspires or interests you? Mm, uh, make me happy is I, I do I do Afro African dance. That mm -hmm. that makes me really happy. Uh, <laughs> that's like for fun. But uh, but I really I, I, I need to move. Uh, coffee makes me happy, and my family that my family is healthy. Yeah, yeah. so. Uh, yeah, I think those those things, Afro. <laughs> uh, I, like, there's nothing in the world that like I co I go there maybe really tired and I always come back home and I'm like I've just shaken everything out and it's. Oh, it's I so know good. this power of yeah, dancing. I yeah. love dancing too. That's <laughs> so good. So I think dancing is like my. If I if I if I would have another life, I would totally want to be a dancer. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And usually we ask this one question to all artists. If you could change one thing in the world, what would it be? Mm. Well, it's a cliche to say, but I would say no suffering for anyone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a good <laughs> thing. And um, it, it was lovely to talk to you yeah, and uh, a really lovely chat. And to end this, as the new year is approaching, uh, let's end it with a wish. What would you wish for yourself first? And second, what would you wish for anyone uh, watching us now? Mm. What, what do I wish? For, for next year or just, uh, just, it, uh, just for a next wish? Next year or in general? Well, I just wish to stay healthy. <laughs> A life, <laughs> or something. Yeah, I think I think that's uh, I think being uh, being healthy physically and also mentally. I think that's uh, I I don't think you can ask for more or wish for another uh, wish. But for others, for uh, uh, these are big questions. You know, I guess it's just the same for others. Mental and physical health is the most important thing because then you can do everything. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you yeah, and uh, we'll thanks. see you later in the show yeah, and thank you hopefully this. see you again in Latvia yeah. and Lithuania and Estonia. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you.